Hey booktube, Chelsea the Reading Outlaw here for another day of videos. All right, today friends, we are wrapping up the two November challenges that I participated in reading wise, which was Nonfiction November and the Tome Top Wall Readathon. If you will remember, I had two, so actually I had three separate TBR videos for November. I've split the actual TBR videos into two, but because of how much I read, it just makes more sense to combine the actual wrap ups into one video. So I read two books for Nonfiction November. I know, I know, but I did at least read two books for Nonfiction November. And then I read two books for Tome Top Wall, one of which was actually on my TBR. The first book that I read for November was Let Me Tell You Something by Caroline Manzo. This was Caroline Manzo's kind of nonfiction how-to life guide thing that she published a couple of years ago. Caroline Manzo is one of the Real Housewives of New Jersey. If you're wondering why I don't have this book, even though my goal was to read physical books for my TBR, it's because I did not love this book, friends. This book only got two stars for me, and I knew it was not going to be a keeper, so I passed it along. I will say there was a good amount of Caroline Manzo's personality in this book, so I did really enjoy getting to learn more about her history and the relationship she had with her parents and her siblings. But there is an old, old school uh, heteronormativity and gender binary breakdown in the Manzo household that like, I don't love, so I actually ended up skipping some of these sections on like, um, like work and housework and love and relationships and those kinds of things just because I am well steeped in that particular uh, tradition of thought, so I didn't really think I needed to read more about it. So yeah, all in all, I ended up just giving it two stars. I went ahead and passed it along to my little free library. After that, I did get the chance to read Andre the Giant, which was a three star book and I will be keeping because my partner wants to read it. This is, like I said in my TBR video, a black and white graphic novel of the life of Andre the Giant. I really thoroughly enjoy getting to know more about him as a person. I did not love the art style of this book as you guys probably just saw in like the the preview like it's just it's very cartoonish and the proportions look odd and I just I don't know I didn't love it I don't know if it's just because it was all in black and white or if it's just specifically because of like the line weight and style and character of how it was done but I didn't love it although I do think that as a graphic biography it works really well telling you about the life and kind of times of Andre the Giant. So I did really enjoy it for those aspects, but I probably will be passing it along after my partner reads it. And then the next two books that I read, the first one was Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson. This is one of the ones from Tome Topple that was on my actual TBR. This big kahuna right here, thousand pages long. This is the third book in the Stormlight Archives. I really enjoyed the like deepening and expanding of the mythos that happened in this book and obviously every book has to do some pretty heavy lifting in terms of like world building and continuing the story and finding the balance between those two things. I will say Brandon Sanderson may not be the best fantasy writer when it comes to portraying women but I do think that he ranks among the better male fantasy writers when it comes to his female characters and we got to meet a couple of more different female characters in this book. I also really just love Shallan and her kind of ways that she's able to use Stormlight and the powers that she's able to adopt in the way that those shift. I don't want to say anything too much because like I said this is the third book, uh, third thousand page book of every other book also has been that long so like there's quite a bit to spoil in every book so I'm not going to get into too many more details but I did finish Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson and then I listened to on audio The Snow Queen by Joan D. Vinge. This book clocks in at just over 500 pages so it does technically count for Tom Topple. This is a classic science fiction book that won the Hugo back in I believe the 80s mid 80s. It was a pick for the Lady Vaults Book Club which is a book club dedicated to shining light and elucidating and giving more spotlight back to some of the forgotten masters of the genre. If the last name Vinge sounds familiar to you, it's because Joan for a while was married to Werner Vinge, Vernon Vinge, who is one of kind of the big classic names in the sci-fi genre. Uh, but she won a Hugo of her own right for a wonderful book that was an exploration of 
the intersections between technology and religion and mysticism and science and fantasy and the blending of the two. I'm very excited to pick up the second book in this duology, The Summer Queen, and see how the adventures kind of round out. But that was a really surprising addition to my Tome Topple Adventures. It was not actually on my TBR. So yeah, those are the four books that I specifically read this uh, in November for those like challenges. I did read a couple more, so I will be having a general November wrap-up coming up in a couple of days, but I did want to go ahead and let you guys know how my results went. All in all, I'm going to say it was a win on the Tome Topple and a not win on Nonfiction November. So we came out middling and I still managed to read some really good books. So let me know down below how your November reading went, if you participated in any of these challenges, how your outcome was, if you managed to find any good or not so good books along the way. Leave me an emoji if you've made it this far. And as always, friends, until next time, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and have happy reading.